sacrificed part four. The rest of the week went by pretty uneventfully. I followed doctor's orders and hung low and stayed home. I had a few visits from friends, wishing me a quick recovery. I also had some massive conversations with Tori via text messaging. Thank God for unlimited texts. It's funny how long you can talk about the smallest things in life. The only really important conversation we had was revolving around when exactly we'd go to the theater. After debating movies and times for a while, we finally agreed on some comedy at 7 o'clock Friday night. Boy did the week go slowly once I had that to look forward to. Another big issue was my band. The battle of the bands was a week from that Saturday. Fortunately, the band had been practicing without me, but I really needed to get to rehearsal with them. After arguing with my mom about its being too intense for my condition, she finally gave in and said that I could go to the Saturday practice if I hung low for the rest of the week, excluding the movie with Tori. Finally, Friday night came and I was on my way to Tori's house to pick her up. The closer I got to her house, the more nervous I became. I just tried to be calm. There were a lot of things that could go wrong, but I knew that the best thing I could do is to ignore those risks and just be myself. I could barely keep my hands steady enough to ring the doorbell as I stood on Tori's porch. I never was so nervous before in my life. Playing in front of huge crowds doesn't bother me, but for some reason, my nerves were getting the best of me that night. Usually, I'd be scared that I'd wet my pants, but I already knew that was going to happen. It didn't take long for Tori to answer the door. Once again, she looked stunning. Her long, curly, brown hair gracefully rested upon her white blouse, which went perfectly with her pink skirt. As usual, she had her cheery smile, that alone would be enough to make a dying man forget the pain that he was experiencing. A smile darted across my own face as she greeted me. Hi Stephen. Hey Tori. You look beautiful tonight. Why thank you. Not looking too bad yourself. Thanks. Do you want to head out right now? I see no point in wasting any more time. The drive over to the theatre was very pleasant. We had a great conversation about which teachers we would like to see getting ran over by a smart car. The fact that I was driving really helped me get comfortable to talk to her. I always feel better when I'm driving, it's like I'm one with my car. That's one reason why I never drank. It would mean that I couldn't drive then, or at least safely. I'd never drive drunk. Also, I'd rather just wait until I'm 21 so that it's more of a privilege. When we got to the theatre, I tried to pay for the tickets, but she refused. She told me that I saved her life, and it was the least that she could do. I knew that the comment wasn't supposed to be hurtful, but it burned deep in me. Once again, the thought started to eke into my head, it's just pity. She wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that bullet. By the time I was able to shake the thought off, she was already paying. I thanked her for the tickets. I hate it when the girl buys the tickets. I feel that it's my responsibility. However, I knew it was very rude to be ungrateful. On our way to Theatre 9, I stopped at the concessions and spent way too much money on popcorn and soda. We had already decided that it would be better to do that than stop by the gas station. The first part of the movie went by great. The movie was a hilarious romantic comedy. It didn't take too long until I found our hands locking together. I glanced over at her and grinned. The night was going perfectly. But, as things usually go, it started to go downhill. About three-fourths of the way through the movie, I started to regret drinking so much caffeinated soda. I could feel that my diaper was getting pretty full. I usually didn't notice when I was going, but it was also the most soda I had drunk since the injury. The fact that I couldn't hold it was terrible. Having not packed a second diaper, all that I could do is hope that I wouldn't leak. My short period of comfort was gone. For the rest of the movie, I was just worrying about my little, okay, big, secret. I could feel my hands were starting to sweat. I just hoped that Tori wouldn't notice. 
about 30 minutes passed and things were still under control. Then, a wave of horror struck me. I could smell it. All I could do was pray that Tori didn't notice it. I thought it was obvious, but then again, I also knew my condition. Then, a few minutes later, my fears came true. Tori leaned over to me and started to whisper. Is it just me, or does it smell like pee? She asked giggling a little. I froze in place. I didn't know how I should respond. I had to decide if I should just say that I couldn't smell it, or agree with her. If told her I couldn't, it might make her think that it was me. I decided to play the innocent role. Yeah. I whispered, I wonder where it's coming from. And just like that, the topic was dropped. Shortly, the movie ended and we made our way to the lobby. Before we left the theater, however, Tori stopped me. Hey. Mind if I use the bathroom quick? She asked. Of course not. All that soda must be going through your system, huh? No kidding. And you drank most of it too. Your bladder must be bursting by now. Nah. I've got a bladder of steel. I said, grinning at my ironic comment. After waiting for a couple minutes, Tori came out and we drove back to her house. I kept my window down, trying to keep the smell of urine out of the car. It would be obvious if she smelt it in the car too. Thankfully, it was only city streets on the way to her house, so there wasn't too much wind noise to hinder any conversation. We reviewed all the funny scenes from the movie, making us laugh even harder than when we were actually watching it. Once again, I felt better while I was driving. It was obvious that Tori was getting comfortable around me too. Hey, do you want to come inside and hang out for a bit? She asked as we pulled into her driveway. The invitation split me in two. I really wanted to go with her, but I knew that I'd be risking it too much. I'd love to. I started, trying to make it clear that I wasn't just blowing her off. But I really need to rest tonight. I have a big band practice tomorrow, and my mom won't let me go if I get back too late. I'm supposed to be taking it easy. Sorry. Oh, that's fine, she said with a hint of disappointment in her voice. I completely understand. I don't want to keep you from recovering faster. Yeah, thanks for offering though. I said as I turned of the engine. Let me at least walk you to your door, though. We got out of the car and started walking to the door. I knew that I had to say something to show that I really did enjoy spending time with her that night, and I knew that I had to think of what to say quickly. Finally, as we reached the door, I started to speak. Thank you so much for going to the movie with me tonight. I really enjoyed it. Oh, no problem. I did too. It was the most fun that I had for a while, actually. She replied, making me start to wonder. Was she serious, or was she just saying that to make me feel better? What if she really did like me? I thought. My optimism started to take over again. I decided I needed to ask her on a second date. We should really hang out sometime soon, though. I blurted. I was getting a little too excited. Yeah, definitely. I always have a good time with you, she started, well, unless someone shows up with a gun. Yeah, that's always a problem. I replied laughing. And I love spending time with you. You're very special. What do you mean by that, she asked. Well there's nobody like you. I was out of control. You're so fun. You're nice, you're smart, and you're just absolutely gorgeous. A.W. Thanks. You're so sweet to me, she said. This would usually be the point where I'd stop, but I just couldn't help it that night. Too many emotions were going through me at that moment. I mean, everybody knows that you're the prettiest girl in the school, but you're even prettier on the inside. Wait, Stephen. What are you saying? Tori. I sighed, realizing that I was beyond the point of no return. 
I know that you're out of my league, but I really like you. I try to just forget about you and move on, but I can't. Every girl I meet is nothing in comparison to you. Tori just stood there looking at me with a grin on her face. At first, I thought it was a good sign, but when she didn't respond, I remembered that there rarely was a time that she wasn't smiling. Sorry. I said. I've gone too far. I should have kept my mouth shut. I'll let you go now. I turned and started towards my car. Wait Stephen. Tori cried, running after me. She grabbed my hand and turned me around. Look. I'm sorry that I didn't respond at first, but I just didn't know what to say. This is all going so quickly. Don't think that I'm too good for you. You're the sweetest boy I know. Not too many people would take a bullet for me, either. Ever since last week, I couldn't stop thinking about you either. At first it was just because you saved my life, but then it was more than that. The whole event kind of woke me up to you. I don't know if it's because we're in two different social circles or what, but I didn't really give you much thought before. I just thought you were another heartbroken guy chasing after me. But after that night in the gas station, I started to realize how great of a guy you really are. Most guys don't really care about what I think or what I like. They just want me because they think I look hot. Those guys wouldn't jump in front of a bullet for me. From what I've seen, Stephen, you care more about me than all my ex-boyfriends put together, and that's the most attractive thing that you can do. Tori. Are you saying that you like me too? Yes. I think I am. A lump was starting to grow in my throat. Well, maybe I'm taking this a little too quickly, but would you like to be my girlfriend? It is happening really quickly, she started, making me a little nervous. But I just can't say no. I'd love to be your girlfriend. I was ecstatic. I had never felt that way before. It was beyond happy. It was beyond joy. Words really cannot describe how I felt at that moment. I just looked into her eyes, sparkling in the moonlight. She must have been feeling the same way as she giggled in her own cute little way. A voice in the back of my head said, kiss her, and that's just what I did. I bent down, put my hand behind her head, and approached her lips. It was the best kiss I've ever had to this day. When we finished, we just stared at each other, smiling. Finally, Tori broke the silence. Well, you better get going. I don't want you to stay up too late on my account. I'll talk to you tomorrow. You're right. It is getting a little late. Good night, Tori. Good night, Stephen. So many thoughts were going through my head as I drove home. I couldn't believe that that just happened. I just kissed the girl of my dreams, in a soaked diaper. How many people can say they've done that before? I felt unstoppable, like I could accomplish anything I wanted at that moment. A week ago, I thought it would be impossible to go out with Tori, but that was just proven wrong. If I could do that, I thought, then I should have no problems winning the Battle of the Bands next weekend.